Hi, this video is going to be about laying out content using JavaFX. So I'm going to make multiple videos. This is the first one. This is just going to be an introduction to what JavaFX applications are, how they live, and how that actually has something to do with the layouts in JavaFX. So the first, this first video will just be about the JavaFX application life. So if you already understand that, then you can just skip this video. The next video will be about some layout theory, what the different layout panes are, what they are used for. And then I'm going to give an example for each one of the layout panes. So that's going to be in the third video. And I might put this into even smaller uh, pieces because uh, some of these can take some time, like the flow pane can take some time to explain. So without further ado, let's go into looking at the Java application life. So when we start a JavaFX application, um, we have to initialize it. And we know there's always this main method in Java programs that is the first one being run. If I look into my configuration, I can see that it runs from the sample package. It runs the main class. It expects to see um, the main method in the main class here. So I can see that. You can also see I set up the module path. In this version of IntelliJ, this is completely new. I just downloaded the newest version. You have to look at the modify options and you have to have the VM options added in order to add modules uh, like this in order not to use the module system, but just to add them uh, directly as VM options. So you have to add VM options here and paste it here, not under program uh, arguments or um, the fully qualified name of the class that contains the main method. So it needs to be here. And of course your SDK needs to be here. Okay. So with that started, we see that we call a method here called launch, and we can see that launch is a static method on application, and this is our starting point. This is where we're going to start out. And launch will then do some magic behind the scenes by uh, setting up everything, and then it will call this start method here. And what it does behind the scenes, it, it, uh, it uh, makes this primary stage ready, which is of type stage. And if we uh, look at that, we will notice that stage is actually a window. So we can say that safely say that stage is the same as a window. So let me just briefly explain that. So when we have a window, like this is the paint. So paint here is a window. So we have like, we can maximize, minimize, close the window. So we can, this is what is called the stage. So the stage holds everything inside of the program. So now I'm maximizing the window. So everything inside of this, we can see we have some tabs and stuff here. This is held onto what we call a scene. So everything within the window is a scene. So we can say that we actually, we have the window itself like this, which is then the window, which is also what we in JavaFX call this stage. And you can imagine a stage like, um, if you're in a theater or something, there's also a scene on that stage. So this big part here is actually the stage. So this smaller part here is going to be the scene that we're going to see. So this also implies something else, namely that you can change the scene on the stage. So you can change out whatever content is in here um, with anything else. If you change the scene, then everything in here changed, but the window stays the same. So inside of the scene, there is something called a scene graph. 
And the scene graph is a set of what we call nodes that will actually hold all the different things that are in the graphical user interface. So that could be, for example, it could hold something like an anchor pane, which is for layout, which we'll learn about in a moment. And that anchor pane could hold something like a button, for example. So in that case, then the anchor pane would be inside of the scene and we would have something like a button here with some kind of text on it, something like that. So this is the layer. So the biggest one, window stage, the stage holds the scene and the scene can hold a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's look back at the code. So if we go into the code, we can see that the first thing it does, it loads a file called sample.fxml. And the sample.fxml file is just what the name implies, the default one. I just created this project default from IntelliJ. So we can see that we have a stage here and we have a scene in here that is kind of hard to see uh, because it's just white. And then we set the title, hello world, that's the title of the window. We should see that on the stage. See up here, the hello world it says here. And it says, create a new scene. And it uses the, the root element, which is, root is actually the fxml file, this one, that it loads into memory. And this is a grid pane. And then it loads that grid pane as the root element, and then it sets the size of that to 300 by 275. And then you need to call show, saying now we did everything, now we want to show that. And when we call show, it will actually pop up uh, on screen and we can see it. So that's basically how it's done. So if you look inside, um, this file here, we can see that right now it's a grid pane. And if we open it up in scene builder, it should look somewhat the same. So we see we have like an empty grid pane here. So let's just try to delete that grid pane and then create something else. So let's go with an anchor pane, put that in here. And now we have an anchor pane and let's go and set style background color to blue, just to see that it's here. And I'll just save that and then close it. And then we see that there's an anchor pane instead and it's in there. I did forget something though. When I deleted the uh, grid pane from before, I forget to, forgot to set the controller. So I need to do that. I'll just say FX controller and set that to sample controller like that so that it has the controller connected. So now we can see it's blue. So we can also see that the anchor pane fills the entire uh, program like this. So it's blue now, and we can actually see that there's an anchor pane inside of this stage here. That's pretty cool. So let's look at the rest. So the application life is like that. It loads an FXML document and it loads it into the controller. Another thing that we can see if I now open up the scene builder is that we can see the different nodes. So we can see that there's a hier hierarchy here with the anchor pane at the bottom. So if I put something into that, like a button, put that in here, we can see that now I have an anchor pane with a button inside of it. And we know that the anchor pane is loaded into a scene and we know the scene is put onto the stage. So this way we could uh, create an FXML file for each scene that we wanted and we could actually toggle them so we can change scenes in the same document. And this way we could have something like a program with multiple screens inside of it, 
we could use buttons for switching between it or something like that. And all of these things in here are called nodes, but when we work with this as programmers, most, most of the nodes we're working with, we can also work with graphic nodes and stuff, but all of these are called control controls, all of these nodes here, because these are the ones we use as programmers. We use buttons, we use uh, sliders, we use uh, text fields, we use a lot of different stuff like that. So these are all controls that we have in within the library. We can also see that we have something here called containers and we have something called controls, etc. So there's a lot of different stuff here. So that's it. Let's save that. And we can also see it uses something you probably know from HTML, like uh, we have these um, special kind of uh, brackets because it's XML. So we have these like anchor pane and inside of that we have children and inside of the children we have button like that. So this is the way that, that it actually works. So going back to the main method, this is how it starts. So this, was, this first video was just to explain that how is everything loaded in here. Um, and then in the next video, I'll try to explain some more about these nodes and controls and dialogues and how, how that actually works.